All right, everybody, welcome to Organic Chemistry Lecture Part 1, Fall 2022 semester. We're doing our first in-class activity right now, and it's right here. And we're supposed to convert the following stick figures. Well, this isn't a stick figure. Uh, uh, that one's the closest to stick figure. Uh, let's just edit the question a little bit. It's not about just stick figures here. Molecule to full Lewis structures. For inorganic species, such as the chlorate ion here, you should count up the valence electron. And we do remember that valence electrons are the electrons of organic chemistry and chemistry in general, right? All right, so chlorine. How do you figure out how many valence electrons? Sorry, I walked away from the, the video here. How many valence electrons are in chlorine? And I, uh, the gentleman's pointing to the periodic table, but I think he found the wrong number because it's so far away from him. Seven. It's seven. seven. Yeah, it's got Roman numerals at the top of the periodic table in this room and the one that you will be given on the test. And look at every practice exam. Those are real exams. Look at that periodic table when you're trying the practice exam. It's your resource. Okay? And it's got a Roman numeral VII over the halogen column. So valence electrons here, seven for chlorine, uh, six for oxygen, and there's three oxygens. And a formal charge of minus one means there's one extra valence electron. You must remember electrons have a minus charge. So if your Lewis structure has a minus overall charge, it's because it has an extra electron. So we add one. 1926, there we go. So when you're done, you better have 26 valence electrons. Now for parts B and C and organic molecules, you need to know the nature of neutral atoms, especially the most important one in this course, carbon, and the second most important in this course, hydrogen. Why do those have to be the most important in this course? because every organic molecule contains carbon bonded to hydrogen. Stop your definition now. That's it, okay? It's not really a definition, it's an observation, okay? So organic molecules must have C bonded to H and they often have everything to the right of C, N, O, F. It's not very often that we have F, so I'm going to put it in blue. Green ones are very popular. But in this course, we do use the halogens quite a bit. They're used in organic chemistry to give molecules specific reactivity or physical property. That's why we have a lot more halogens in our course than we do out in nature. There are halogens in organic molecules in nature. There's only maybe a million molecules out there that have halogens. That we that we would know about anyway, and a million is zero compared to the amount of organic molecules found in nature. Do you know how many molecules are found in nature? Gazillion. I think her answer is better than the one I was going to give. She said a gazillion. We don't know, and just look at one type of molecule, one called DNA, and look at like one species. Like a particular interest to in me, mosquitoes. Not that I like them, but I, in the summer I camp a lot, so I have to think about them. And there are trillions of insects, uh, sorry, mosquitoes, but maybe not. Let's just stick with billions, right? Well, each DNA molecule in each individual mosquito is unique. Whoa. So right there, billions of molecules just from that one source. 
Those are unique molecules. So uh, gazillions, come on. How many, how many species we got out there? We haven't even found those, all the species yet, and we probably won't. Okay, I do go off a little bit sometimes. When it gets exciting. We have to know the two facts. The two facts are the number of bonds and the number of lone pairs. And nitrogen, sorry, hydrogen's nature is to have, I'm gonna move hydrogen over a little bit, sorry. So I can use those red. Hydrogen's got one bond and zero lone pairs. When it's a neutral atom in a, a nature of neutral atoms in molecules. This is for uh, organic molecules. I mean, it's the nature of these atoms in all molecules, but we're organic. Carbon, how many bonds does it like to have? Four. Four. How many lone pairs does it like to have? None. If it had eight lone pairs and four bonds, it would have 20 electrons around the carbon. That would be a record for the worst oxide violation of carbon ever reported. Uh, Henry Ford Pop. <laughs> Remember, the octet rule says an atom strives to have. Doing this off microphone, sorry, I gotta get used to being back in class. A molecule strives to have a full octet of electrons around it. So when carbon has four bonds, each bond has two electrons, then carbon has a full octet. That's eight. Nitrogen gets a full octet in a different way, doesn't it? How many bonds? Just think of ammonia, people. What's ammonia's formula? NH3. Well, there's only six electrons if you have three H's attached. Where's the other two? A lone pair, yes. So nitrogen's very nature is to have three and one, and oxygen's four and zero. And think about water for oxygen, people. You got two bonds to hydrogen, that's two bonds. Two. Oxygen's nature is to have two bonds. How many lone pairs? You only got four electrons around that oxygen right now. So you need two more lone pairs to get uh, four more electrons. And fluorine, what's its nature? One bond, you see a pattern? I love when the periodic table gives us patterns. It makes us learn, it makes our job of learning much easier. And three lone pairs. And you do know that the same rules hold down for silicon, germanium, tin, lead, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, Antimony, bismuth, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, polonium, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and nobody talks about astatine. There we go. So whatever you say for the ones above, you say for the ones below, right? That is the beauty of the periodic table. The genius of Mendeleev. We figured that out. Thank you. Are you Thank you, Dimitri. No, but um, one of my favorite courses in graduate school in 92, 1992, most of you weren't around, okay, was the survey of the periodic table by Dr. Charles Winter. I love that course. And our earliest activity in that was to he'd give you a blank periodic table with just, you know, spaces for the symbols. And we had to learn how to fill that out. And of course, being the young students we were, we had, we had competitions and we got it under two minutes, you know, fill out all those blanks. And with a little practice, I can still do that today. I need like one round of practice. But anyway, guys, it's not a very useful skill. <laughs> it's cool, but you know, it's not the big deal. Uh, yeah, so keeping that in mind, you don't have to count valence electrons for organic molecules. You just got to make sure you know the nature of the mole of the ash. So if you've got a carbon there with two lone pairs and two bonds, <laughs> it's just wrong. If you've got a carbon with one lone pair and three bonds, it's wrong. Okay. 
So let's not do that. So we're, we're going to follow all the rules of your Chem 141 days. Just, this first one's just for old time's sake, and you are responsible for it. And it's on the board, it says valence electrons. We've talked about that. Those are the ones we do chemistry with. And then it says we're supposed to figure out the skeleton. And they gave you guidelines for the skeleton, right? Those aren't rules, by the way. Different instructors have different ways of coming up with the same Lewis structure. Um, I, I, I avoid putting oxygen in the middle because oxygen, oxygen tends to form just one bond, one attached to one thing on the outside. That's its nature. Uh, you guys probably learned something about put the less electronegative atom in the middle. That's not always a rule, right? Like ammonia. Come on, ammonia. Nitrogen electronegativity 3.0. You put it in the middle over hydrogen 2.1. You didn't follow your own rule, right? It's not a rule. That's why. But if you remember the rule, avoid bonding oxygen to oxygen at all costs. That is a rule. Because it's not a happy bond, so it doesn't, it's unstable, that's why. It doesn't typically form that way. So all those oxygens in ClO3 negative, they're not bonded to each other because there's an optional that's different in that. Bond to a less electronegative chlorine means the oxygen's more stable. Do you know why? Not why helps you learn, remember things. Why does oxygen prefer to bond to less electronegative atoms? Got a hungry nucleus, that's why. Very electronegative. Near the end of that row up there, isn't it? This close to a full octet, you know? And it's it pulls electrons strongly towards itself. Isn't that electronegativity? How strongly an atom pulls electrons towards itself in a bond? That is electronegativity. Well, if you've got an oxygen bond to an oxygen, it's saying, give me those, give me those electrons, the other oxygen saying the same thing to me. Not, neither oxygen is, is uh, happy, which means they're not stable. But if you bond it to a chlorine, the oxygen says, yeah, my, my nucleus needs those electrons more than you do. It does, because it's a very electronegative nucleus. And it pulls the electrons close to the oxygen, away from chlorine. Chlorine's there, meh, I don't care as much, right? 3.0 for chlorine, 3.5 for oxygen. Learn the electronegativity. They are in the textbook, in a table. There's not a lot of them. There's memory tricks in the textbook. The same table shows up twice in the first chapter with the, name, the same numbers. It's that important. Learn them like you're going to use them on every task. Okay. Oh, did you get a mask? We got a box of masks somewhere. Somebody make sure she gets it. Okay, thank you. I'm looking for the No, no, N is on there and H is on there. They're different, different atoms. Oh, I see. Sorry about that. Okay. I need my memory to refresh. Yeah. CL in the middle, surrounded by three O's. We successfully avoided any OOs. That's your skeleton right there. And we don't have any oxygens by the oxygen, which we should always avoid. Do you know how many electrons you've used out of your 26 so far? She said six. Because she saw she sees three bonds. So we got to get rid of six that we drew and put 20 on there. I'll put them on black. Oh, green. Oh, yeah, black. And you probably learned uh, a guideline. It wasn't really a rule. They probably said it was a rule. Put them as lone pairs on the outside until those octets are full. It's a good guideline. Do it. That'll do 18, won't it? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. You're not allowed to put any more electrons around those oxygens. Their octets are full. Uh, the only place to put a lone pair is chlorine. 
Now, for some of your course, uh, your 141, we stopped right there. That everything's done. Every atom's got a full octet, right? Chlorine's got a lone pair for two. Chlorine's got three bonds for six more. That's eight. Each oxygen's got one bond for two and three lone pairs for six more. That's eight. So this molecule spends zero time like this. Zero. It doesn't ever look like this. It has too many formal charges. What is formal charge? Don't give me a, a, a definition that tells you how to do it. Tell me a definition of what it is. Formal charge. It's how an atom feels in a molecule compared to how the same atom feels on the periodic table. So, how many electrons does an oxygen atom on the periodic table own? It's written right above the oxygen. Six. How many electrons does this oxygen own over here on this molecule on the far left? It owns all six of those, and it doesn't own both of the electrons in a bond. What is a bond also called? Co Co Covalent. What's going on? Share. It's sharing. It's sharing two electrons. Now pretend you live in an ideal world where you sharing two things and you go to divorce court, it's a, it's a fair, ideal world. After the divorce, you were sharing two things before the divorce. See, they're married there? They're married. But uh, if they get divorced, how many electrons does each one get? One. one. So owning two electrons, sorry, sharing two electrons is like owning one. Okay, so it's not sharing these six, so it owns those entirely, right? And it owns one more for the bond. So it owns seven here compared to the periodic table. How does this oxygen feel compared to the periodic table? Three answers are possible. Uh, negative one, uh, zero, or positive one. Negative one. Because it has an extra valence electron. I like, personally, I like circling my formal charges. That's just a personal preference. That way I know it's not a, a math symbol, is it? Yes, sir. Good question. For the second one. Oh, we're not there yet. Oh. We got to finish this one. Each oxygen, the same story, right? Yeah, that's a lot of formal charges, people. If you're an atom, would you prefer having a formal charge or being neutral? Which one's more stable for you? Neutral. Neutral is always more stable. So this molecule, every atom there has a formal charge, even chlorine. Let's work on it. Hey, we just learned, right? Uh, it owns both the electrons and the lone pair, the chlorine. And it shares, uh, it shares six is like owning three, right? Just count bonds for ownership. One, two, three, and two more is five. Up there, what's the story? It owns seven electrons here. It only owns five here. I'll give you five answers possible. Negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two. Positive two, because it owns two less electrons than the one on the periodic table. Those are all formal charges, and when every atom has a formal charge, you're not going to get credit for that answer. For the reason we just talked about, we'd rather have a zero charge, and we can knock off three of those four charges. And get rid of three of the four. Here's the way you do it. And I want to show you the process so you have it visual for you. And I'm going to get the 20 answers. I got a lot extra. It looks very messy at first. Dude. Well, get used to me talking to my computer a lot, too. I'm trying to get just. Try to get this, this so I can copy paste it, but I think I'm getting an extra. But I can erase the extra. Oh. <laughs> I 
I am rusty. Same story, right? Can I leave it there? No, it's a disaster. Uh, I'll just do it. Trying to get the rest done. So I'm going to take the lone pair from the far right and put it there instead. So what happened? I'm not finished yet, but what happened to the oxygen? It used to own seven, and now it owns two, four, five, six. Hey, that's the same as the six on the periodic table, zero. What about chlorine? I think it's still plus one, right? It owns two, three, four, five, six. Up there it owns seven. So it's still plus one. We're not finished though. I'm going to leave the oxygen on the bottom the same. And I'm going to move that lone pair from the far left into the molecule. So notice I didn't get rid of any electrons. I took lone pair off and put it here as a bond, and there it is. I took this lone pair off and put it here as a bond. And I think the only remaining formal charge is the O minus at the bottom. Do you agree? Because chlorine now owns two, watch me count, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is the best Lewis structure for the chloride ion. And some of you remember this action. Some of you don't. You could draw another Lewis structure with the same stability. And those red arrows just indicate how the electrons are moving around in the molecule. I'm going to go to monotone here. Yeah. So what's the difference between these two structures? Yeah, this oxygen on the bottom is now neutral, and the one on the left has the minus. Does it matter? No, well, it, it, it does, because it means this molecule spends as much time like this as like this because the stability of those two species is the same. They both have a, one of the O's with a minus and the rest of the O's neutral, right? And then there's a third Lewis structure that you could draw like this. You're saying, does he want all of this in this quiz? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm gonna go like this. Uh, no, don't... Many structures are portable. Well, in this case, the, because there's three oxygens, there would be three equivalent structures. Each one of them will uh, bear its own share of the burden for the minus charge. What do I mean by that? Having a minus is a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can spread that bad thing around, then that makes the species overall less uh, unstable because of that bad thing called a formal charge. Resonating formal charge, that's resonance, right? Resonance, moving electrons in the molecule only, stabilizes formal charge. It stabilizes other things too, but we're not, this example does not illustrate that. Okay. I think in terms of video, that was a good length for the first video. Keep the, keep the quiz in front of you. Uh, we'll pick up and start the video in the next segment for B and C. So I'm going to stop in that.